Hey guys, Blue Mystery here, and welcome to Windcraft in a nutshell. Today, I shall be covering the entirety of Windcraft in less than 20 minutes. I'll have to cut out a lot of the details to keep this video as short as possible, but if you guys want to see more information on any of the topics in this video, there will be sources in the description. I've also divided this video into chapters, and there will be timestamps on screen and the description to avoid wasting your time. And without further ado, let's get into chapter 1. Windcraft was founded by Grian, Solitude, and Joomla in 2013, but it was preceded by Crafted Movie, which was made in 2011 by Solitude. It is the largest MMORPG server in Minecraft, with over 4 million unique logins, and has a Guinness World Record for the largest MMORPG built in Minecraft. It has an extensive lore from having to kill a chicken on a distant island to going back in time in a timeless ruin. You begin the game as one of the four now fight classes and do quests on the server as a Ragni soldier trying to stop the corruption, which I'll talk about more in the lore section of this video. Minecraft also has a custom soundtrack and texture pack, which should be being used right now. Minecraft has a ton of history, most of which I'll have to keep out of this video due to time constraints, but this should be a pretty good explanation of it. If you guys want to see a more detailed explanation, I suggest watching Kmaxi's video about this topic or clicking the forum link in the description, which is Minecraft's history written by a server mod. Before we get into the history of Minecraft, we need to get into the history of Crafted Movie. Crafted Movie of Assaulted's first Minecraft server and the name of his inactive YouTube channel. The Crafted Movie team made a bunch of Minecraft skits, and in some of the thumbnails you might be able to see a person wearing a Link skin from The Legend of Zelda, and that is actually Grian before he switched over to a plain red shirt. Anyway, one day Salted had the idea to make an MMORPG server called Windcraft, so he assembled a team consisting of Grian, the builder, Joomla and Krunkle, the devs, and Tama63 and Hi My Name is AJ, the web developers, who both have pigment skins for some reason. There were a lot more people, and most of the city names are actually anagrams of their names, but um, yeah, the, the, they aren't important. Minecraft was officially released in May 2013 and only had three dungeons and five cities. Back then, there was almost no content, and it was literally just killing mobs for emeralds, XP, and some gear. There were four classes back then. Warrior, Mage, Archer, and the Donator-only Assassin class. Like most of the servers back then, Minecraft was extremely small and heavily relied on donations to keep the server running, so the perks for donating were really good. Some of the Donator-only perks were the VIP Village, cool looking blue VIP armor, access to locked area only for VIPs, and cool pets that could fight for you, but those weren't added until a later update. But I'll talk about that later. The highest level back then was level 70. But content stopped at level 45, so there really wasn't any reason to grind to level 70. But remember I talked about that other update which added pets 2 seconds ago? That was a pet update, but it wasn't just pets. They also added dueling, swarms, removed the VIP only area restrictions, and added a lot more gear and content all the way up to level 60. One person called Samavizal even managed to get all four classes to level 70 and found a glitch that allowed you to get to level 71, but it required all of the experience from levels 1 to 70 to get there. But instead of giving up and reporting the bug to the admins, he spent weeks grinding XP to get to level 71, and then had his XP set back to level 70, so um... Yeah, that happened. I mean, it wasn't a total waste, because now you're able to get an extra level after a maximum level by getting all the XP required to go from level 1 to the current max level. I'm just gonna skim over the rest of the updates so this doesn't make up the majority of this video because we still have a lot to go and I'm still saying things that happened in 2013. 1.09 was the quest update, which added a ton of new quests, a new city called Troms, and skill points, which are used to increase your base stats. 1.10 was the ocean update, which added a ton of small islands with new quests and horses. 1.11 was the spell update, which revamped almost all the spells. 1.12 was the mob update, which completely redid all of the old cities, all of the dungeons, and a ton of quests. It removed the VIP town and PvP arena and added a bunch of new areas like Rymek and the Mesa Biome. It also made changes to a ton of mobs and pets were removed from the shop. 1.13 was the winter update which made a ton of changes to Nisak, added guilds and added the Tower of Ascension. 1.14 came out like a year later and was the Gavel expansion which added Gavel a completely new province with new stuff. It also made a ton of changes to gameplay like reducing mob lag, giving potions level requirements, charges, and making them be able to be drunk instantly. It also added human NPCs and other stuff that I don't have time to go over because they spent the next year just making changes to 1.14. 1.15 was the 2016 winter update, which added a new island called Corcus, but wasn't able to be accessed until 1.16, which was the Corcus update, which actually added Corcus, a machine island place, and some more quests. 1.17 was the Dungeons and Discoveries update, which like the name suggests replaced a ton of the old dungeons with new ones and added a few more, and added Discoveries to replace Relics. But most importantly, it made Weibos 200% cuter, which makes me question why they called it the Dungeons and Discoveries update, if rivals were the main attraction. And then they spent another year making patches to that. 1.18 was the economy update, which added professions of two types, 
Gathering and Crafting. Each of these professions had a max level of 130, and there are 4 gathering professions and 8 crafting professions. This update basically allowed you to craft your own gear which could be made stronger than mythic armor, the rarest and most powerful gear. It also reworked a ton of quests. 1.19 was a Silent Expanse update, which added new areas and quests for people over level 100, and a new class called the Shaman class. They also added Fabled items, a new tier of items between legendaries and mythics, that are 10 times rarer than legendaries. It also added the Ingredients Pouch, which holds all of the craft ingredients you collect along the way. And that is where we are right now. Now I'm going to talk about the Windcraft lore. I'm going to make the lore section of this video extremely simplified and only tell you guys the minimal amount of information required to understand what's going on. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to spoil the more interesting content that you get to experience later as you progress through the story. But if you want to know the entire lore of Windcraft, there's a link to the lore section of the Windcraft wiki in the description. I'm going to divide this section into three parts. Wind lore, Bob's story, and your past. Starting off with wind lore, around a thousand years ago, a group of miners were searching for emeralds. One day, they discovered the nether portal, and out of curiosity, one of the miners went inside. Once the miner went to the nether portal, he went insane from the influence of the corruption and mutated, turning into the corrupter of worlds. When he emerged from the portal, he brought with him armies of corrupted and killed his fellow miners. After that, the corruption began to spread from the portal and created the roots of corruption. The roots spread underground, and long-term exposure to them slowly induces insanity, as can be seen in the corrupted village. Everyone infected by the corrupted became corrupted themselves, and the corruption has the power to bring back the dead. Theodoric Twain tried to stop the corruption by attacking the portal, but it failed and in turn became corrupted himself. To protect Nasak from himself, he froze the entire area and trapped himself in the ice barrows, which is why Nasak is the only place in men that is cold. Geroth, the second human to be corrupted by the portal, became corrupt when he was studying the portal and a mysterious figure pushed him in. When he came out, he too, like Theodoric, went insane and became motivated to purify the world and began experimenting on creepers in the Lost Sanctuary. Robert, also known as Bob, was born 850 years after the corruption broke it. An unknown woman gave birth to him in the Ragnosaurus during a siege and died afterwards. After his mother died, a poor woman called Momo adopted Bob. When Bob was 12, hordes of corrupted attacked the city, infecting many residents of the city, including Momo. Momo didn't want Bob to see her become corrupted, so she gave Bob a map with locations marked on it and a pair of black daggers and asked Bob to kill her. He then traded 20 years with weapons, 5 with each class. He went to the locations marked on the map, and at each one he met a master that trained him. At every place, the master was a man holding out his hand, where Bob would give his weapon and it would transform into the weapon he would practice for the next 5 years. He practiced knivery with Chalk in the Desert of Almudj, Archery and Spirituality with Mail in the House of Twain, Wandlor with Eddie in the Nivla Village, and the Ways of the Spear with Fear in Troms, where he also got the name Bob, as it sounded better. 24 years later, Bob faced off Bakal, the leader of the Corrupted Army, on the Emerald Trail, and became the first person to defeat him. Bakal has not been seen since. He spent the rest of his life protecting the province of Vin from the corruption and many different kinds of monsters. At one point, he went to Dead Island and slew the beast that hatched there, and went to Gavel. Nearly a hundred years later, in his old age, Bob split his power into his companions, Pluckles, Bob, and Moonington and hid them across the ocean. He wrote a letter to his friend Norem in which he wants him to fake his death. The letter reads, The world cannot know of my sacrifice. No one must search for me. We must fake my death and create a body for them to bury. After splitting his power, he went to a land of darkness far away to steal an unknown beast with his own life force, as he stated killing it was not an option. One year after his disappearance, a tomb and monument was made in the sack forest. Now this is where you come in. There are going to be massive spoilers here, so I suggest skipping to the timestamp on screen if you don't want to hear this part. You're told that you are from the Fruma province, a human civilization which is ruled by monarchs with magic no one else possesses. Fruman prisoners, who are really just normal people abducted for dumb reasons, have their memories erased and are sent to win as warriors to replace the ones that have died to the corruption. You and two other people are brought in a wagon to the Wind province to become soldiers and do tasks around the kingdom. You, unlike other humans, cannot be corrupted, and instead of turning into a zombie on death, you respawn at the cost of soul points. This is because you are from the realm of light, and every time you die, you get sent to the realm of light and then back to the world. When the sun rises, you gain soul points because, as I stated before, you are from the realm of light. Now let's go on to the game design. 
When you log on to Windcraft for the first time, you're given a choice of 5 unique classes with tons of different abilities and stats. Each class is special in its own way, and each class has hundreds of custom made items, which all have unique textures because of the amazing texture pack made by the staff team. All the blocks in Minecraft had to be retextured for this pack, and 3D models had to be made for all of the items. Let's not forget the sounds. The sounds in the texture pack are used to make the different music you hear throughout the world, and I just want to give a huge thank you to all the people who took the time out of their days to make this texture pack, because without the texture pack, Minecraft just wouldn't be the same. The next thing you'll see is the items. All the items have different rarities and abilities, which all had to be coded, balanced, tested, given a lore if they're a special item, and then finally released to the public. What makes these items so impressive is the sheer number of items, and all of these items had to go through the same exact process. Let's not skip quest items and crafting, because all of those items had to be coded as well. They had to decide which items should have what properties, and then code in the drops for all of the custom mobs they also had to code. We can't forget the animations though, there are tons of different animations that take place in Minecraft, made be a door opening or a meteor spell, and I'm not even halfway done explaining all the cool things in Minecraft. There are quests, dungeons, dungeon quests, PvP and trading, custom built maps, boss battles, secrets, and most importantly the massive lore of Windcraft. The Windcraft lore is absolutely insane, from people being turned into iron golems to an all-seeing eye. There are literally hours of entertainment on Minecraft, with quests going up all the way to level 103. And believe me when I say it'll take you weeks, even months to get there because of how much content there is. Minecraft has been getting new updates every year, and the progression system is just one of the best I've seen in a while. Prices of old gear doesn't just drop to zero because of new updates, and new updates offer tons of brand new content, which won't affect how expensive things are for new players, because a rare level 100 helmet has pretty much the same drop chance as a level 1 rare helmet, thus reducing fluctuations in prices. The only problem I can see with this is if new players just stop joining the server altogether, but even then the items can be sold to the blacksmith for a decent price. And I doubt people are just gonna stop joining for no reason, but it's this amazing. I know that I've obviously missed a ton of stuff like chests, skill points, etc, but there are just so many cool things in Minecraft that I just can't mention all of them in this one video. And at last, we have the beginner's guide. These are just some quick tips for people that who are just starting out, but if you want to see a much better beginner's guide than this 2 minute long part of the video, I suggest you go and watch Kmaxi's video because he has like a complete beginner's guide for Windcraft. These are just some things that'll help you in case you have no idea on what to do. The first step is to never craft, or at least until you're at a high enough level to need better gear than Mythics. Collecting resources and crafting is an extremely grindy process, and the only thing I suggest you craft as a beginner is a full set of Theric's armor, which is crafted with 24 Theric's chain. This set gives you over 400 HP at a really low level requirement and can be used until around level 30 to 35, so it's pretty good for starting out. A good way to make coins as a beginner is to sell repair scraps. All you have to do is buy a ton of leather caps and ragni, turn them into repair scraps, and then sell them on the market. But this isn't a really good method of money making once you get to a higher level because at that point you'll just be faster to do the quests for emeralds. Be sure to always check the additional buffs that certain pieces of armor give because those stats can really make a difference. A good rule of thumb for when you're getting stuff is to look at the rarities, because most of the time the higher the rarity an item is, the better it is, but sometimes lower rarity items can be better. I suggest looking at the Windcraft map in case you get lost, and downloading Windtails, a Windcraft mod, which has tons of useful features which will help you out. Anyway, that's gonna be the end of this video, I try to keep it as short as possible, but Windcraft just has a ton of content so it's hard to keep these videos concise. This video took literally hours to script, record, and edit, so if you could leave a like or subscribe that would be great, and I'll see you guys later.